If God created Satan as a perfect being, where did his wickedness come from? If God is perfect, how could evil enter our world? Where did Satan's initial desire for wickedness come from? Like all angels, God initially created Satan through the ministry of his son Jesus Christ, as confirmed in John 1, 1 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, without Him nothing was made that has been made. All creatures owe their existence to God, and nothing was created without Him. It is important to highlight that all of God's creations were perfect, including Lucifer who would later become Satan. If that is the case, how did imperfection and evil enter the world? How did humanity, and even some angels, become corrupted? How did Satan become malevolent? Today, we will reflect on these questions. The fall of Satan from grace is truly remarkable. To understand this, let us hear how the prophet Isaiah spoke about the origin and fall of Satan. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High but you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Ezekiel painted an even more surprising picture of Satan's original perfect state and his fall into the abyss. He said of Satan, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, sardonyx, topaz, diamond, turquoise, onyx, jasper, sapphire, carbuncle, emerald, and gold. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were an anointed cherubim as a guardian, and I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence, and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. When Satan rebelled against God, he not only brought God's wrath upon himself, but also convinced a portion of the angels to join him against God. Some estimates suggest that about one-third of the angels followed Satan in his rebellion. At this point, Satan and his angels truly became evil and opposed to God, his divine plan and the human beings he created. The word perfection captures the exceptional personal and moral qualities of Satan in his creation. He was not only full of wisdom, but also radiated stunning beauty. He possessed the seal of excellence, being perfect in beauty and blameless in his ways from the day of his creation. Both Isaiah and Ezekiel testify that he held the highest position among all created beings in the universe. It is also clear that he had a special and close relationship with God. He resided on God's holy mountain, which symbolizes the place of God's visible glory. However, without explicitly explaining how it happened, the account reveals that iniquity was found in this supposedly perfect angel. How did this happen? The best clue can be found in Ezekiel 28:17, where it states, you became proud because of your beauty, and your fame corrupted your wisdom. So I cast you to the ground as a warning to other kings. Due to Satan's proud and self-centered nature, his wisdom was overshadowed. He became obsessed with himself, pondering on his own beauty instead of focusing on the glory of God. This led to his downfall. This story highlights the danger of pride and self-obsession. In Luke 10, 10, 18, Jesus described witnessing Satan's fall from heaven like lightning. To fully understand what Jesus meant, let us examine the context in which he made this revelation. 
It was when 70 disciples returned after Jesus had sent them to preach and prepare the way for Jerusalem. Upon their return, they were filled with joy and perhaps personal pride. They reported to Jesus, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. It was then that Jesus warned them against pride, saying, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Jesus was cautioning against excessive pride. He was indicating that their delight in having authority over demons should not lead them to excessive pride. Pride is a sin that can lead to other sins, just as excessive arrogance caused the fall of Lucifer and his expulsion from heaven. The disciples should be cautious to avoid this danger in their ministry. Lucifer had exalted himself due to his pride, and they should learn from his fall and remain humble in their ministry. As a consequence of his misconduct and rebellion, God dethroned Satan, and he was expelled from his privileged position on the holy mountain of God and came to the earth after his original sin. His punishment awaits him in the form of eternal fire, as mentioned in Matthew 25, 41. Satan brought evil into the world despite being perfect in his creation, because evil originated in him as he developed pride and arrogance, turning something beautiful and perfect into sin and imperfection. Here are some of the things that pride led Satan to contemplate and attempt against God. He said, I will ascend to heaven. Even though he already had access to the presence of God, Satan sought to reside in the place of God. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. The reference to the stars symbolizes the angels, and Satan desired to elevate his authority above other celestial beings. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly. This indicates that Satan aspired to rule over all matters. I will be like the Most High. This statement represents the pinnacle of his self-assertion and rebellion, showing his audacious ambition to be equal to God. Due to the rebellion caused by his pride and self-absorption, Satan's personality underwent a profound change, going from perfect to imperfect. The holiness he once obtained from his Creator was lost, and corruption took its place. The exact moment of Satan's fall is not explicitly revealed in the Bible. However, we can deduce a time frame based on biblical evidence. At some point, after the original creation of the heavens and the earth, Satan and his angels fell. It remains uncertain whether Satan fell before or after the creation of humanity, but it is clear that his fall occurred before Genesis 3, where the temptation of Adam and Eve is recorded. Satan successfully deceived and seduced some angels to join him in his rebellion, leading to their permanent moral decay. After this seduction, there was no turning back for them, and they were condemned to a existence of sin and destruction. The book of Revelation 12.4 symbolically describes how a third of the stars of heaven, representing the angels, were swept away by the dragon Satan in his attempt to thwart God's plans. It is crucial to remember that the same Bible that records the origin and existence of evil also portrays God as completely just and perfect in all his ways. He views sin as extremely wicked and worthy of judgment. God neither promotes nor perpetuates sin, as stated in James 1.13. No one when tempted should say, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. Temptation does not come from God, but arises from our own weaknesses. God is beyond temptation, and he does not tempt anyone. Satan, with his beauty, became a source of pride that ultimately led to his expulsion from God's presence. His own pride and self-importance corrupted his mind. He is still driven by pride, seeking to usurp what belongs to God. Understanding Satan's pride serves as a cautionary lesson for us, helping us to avoid such pride in our own lives through the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit.